So in this video, I'm going to show you how I fill up my tracks and add energy to certain sections of my tracks to make them sound much fuller and much bigger. So I want you to listen to uh, the first example, the first version of this beat that I'm going to play for you so that you hear it. And then I'm going to play a second version of the track so that you can hear a difference just to show you the kind of filling up that I'm talking about. And then I'll show you how I did it. So this is the first version I'm going to play for you right now. And now I'm going to play the second version of this track. Did you hear the difference there? Just after the build up and then the drop, you can feel the energy is different. It's not something that is too big, but it's something that you can clearly notice when it's not there as opposed to when it's there. So it's something that I've always struggled with. And all the drums that I used in this video, they are found in the link down below. You can check them out if you need all these drums. Make sure to hit the link that's down below and find everything that I use to make music on this channel. So what I did, I put in some percussion sounds and some drum sounds that just play within the track itself so that I can add an accent below everything and just fill it up. So it's not too loud, but it's just sitting there. So I have these two tracks uh, right here. I have these African drum, uh, this African drum loop right here and then this African drum loop two right here so that um, I can fill it up. So you can see that with the, when it comes to this loop here, I, I added it right here at the beginning and then you can also see it right after the break section here and then after the build up and then it comes in here so this is the loop the first loop that i added so it just repeats that and you can see the notes right here that i made sure that i play it like that So these are stuff that you can just basically record in and you know just play something that goes with the track although the pitch and the style and the groove of it it might not really go along with the track itself but that's the beauty of it because it's playing in, in a random and like like an offbeat time and so it's filling up all those spaces that are empty because of your main groove and making sure that those spaces are not left empty but they're left with a little bit of something that's playing so be careful not to make these uh, situations these segments loud and make these instruments just be too loud because then now they're going to throw off the whole rhythm and then now there's the second one here that i threw in and this is where it gets busy because i i really wanted to uh, do so much more because i did the first one and it was nice and simple like you saw and then the second one was way more complex than that so i, I just went overboard So that's how it sounds like, right? There's a lot going on there and you can hear how low they sound. They sound pretty low. So this is how it looks. This is all the notes. As you can see, it's very busy. There's a lot going on here. But all you just have to do with this kind of situations is you just create like one bar and then you start duplicating that one bar and then start to just add variations per bar as you're going. So that's how you can end up with something busy like this. It's not like you draw in everything all at once. Come on, bro. We don't do that anymore. So you see it's just a repetition of the same thing that just keeps repeating but it's very busy and it adds so much nice flavor to it and again the rhythm doesn't have to be the same rhythm as your track in terms of the groove of everything it can be different and that's a good thing like i said because it fills in all those empty spaces because when you make your groove there's going to be some empty spaces in between the beats and everything that you have loaded up in terms of drums so when you do that you make sure that it's all good so this is the track without the the second loop here that is too busy it sounds like this it's nice and, and it's getting there but it doesn't sound as it's not really filling up as much as you know i would like it to you let me know what you think down below but when i load up the second one this is how it sounds like That is so much better. I actually like uh, how that sounds with both of them playing. And then I just pan them 
left and right so that you know they just kind of have a distance between them so that if you play pay close attention you can definitely hear which is which and just some processing that i did to the first drums here to the first group of drums here i just added an eq right here just to cut off some low end and then just boost some of the high to mid to high mid range around there so that it can stand out so this is without the EQ. And this is with the EQ. So I just made it not to clash with my main drums and my bass because I didn't want that. So I didn't want that information. I wanted it to fill in everything else. After that, I just also added like a tube EQ. So this is without the tube EQ. And this is with. So this tube EQ is just, um, I just picked up the drum bus preset. It sounds really good. But what I like about this drum bus preset is that it's adding a lot of drive to the signal itself. It's adding warmth and making sure that the drums just sound nice and, and full and big. And, you know, just adding all those harmonics because that, that's the whole point of doing this is to fill in all those spaces in terms of frequencies and everything. So it did a really good job. And then the second loop here. I just basically uh, did something different. I didn't EQ much. I just cut out, just rolled off the low frequencies like that. And then I just also added a compressor just to catch a couple of the peaks because I know that I have too much going on on that loop right there. So let me play it back so that you can see what's happening. So this is without any processing on it. And this is with just the EQ. Just rolling off a lot of that low end energy that I didn't want there because when it comes to the low end, it gets really tricky when you're making your track. So you want to make sure that you tame all that low end so that you don't have too much basses clashing and mi mix it up also with phase issues. It's just going to be a mess. So I'd rather just cut everything off uh, right there. Just starting around around 200 hertz and going down. That's why I usually like to cut. But if I'm feeling a bit more generous, I can maybe start at 100 hertz and then just cut everything there and just make sure that, you know, I the, the, the cue is very, very, is very, very steep, like just like that, so that I properly cut. But sometimes I don't want to do that. I want to, you know, make sure that it's, it's sloping gently like that, just gradually cutting off like that. So let me just put it back to 200 and just fix it again. I think I went overboard there just like this. I think that's good enough. Go back to 200 like this. And you know you can actually type. I can just put in 200 if you know the number that you're going for there. And then after that, I added a compressor. So this is without the compression. And this is with the compression. So as you can see here, it's catching some of those peaks just to equalize the sounds, just to equalize, you know, those peaks that are just popping up like that. So the compression is not too much. It's not it's not doing too much. You can see the gain reduction here is very little. Like you can see, it's just about around two dBs of gain reduction that's happening right there. You can see on the meter right here, it's not really going down that much. So these are my settings that I used on this compressor here. And of course I did choose a drum mix preset and because it's usually that nice uh, place to start and then you know you just tweak and fine tune accordingly but that's how it sounds so all in all the track sounds nice and full and i'm totally happy with it so this is how the track sounds <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you found this useful and you found this helpful, make sure to drop this video a like and all the drums that I used in this video, they are found in the link down below. You can check them out. If you need all these drums, make sure to hit the link that's down below and find everything that I use to make music on this channel. But other than that, I'll see you in my next video. You can check out the next video that's on screen right now and I'll see you there. I'm X and I'm out. Peace.